Well, this is going to be interesting because I'm going to talk about one subject, but two different things that happen with that subject. And I'm going to mention something that I never really thought much about before. I haven't done all that many videos on this channel as it regards diabetes. As a matter of fact, as far as I can tell, I've only done one. That's because this used to be a channel where I mainly talked about leadership stuff and healthcare stuff, but not my healthcare. Healthcare as it regards to medical billing, coding, different things like that. So I changed it up a little bit. I do leadership wherever I want to, but mainly on my other channel now. And I have talked mainly about certain personal issues related to health on the other channel because that's where I started it instead of doing it here. That's just a quick preamble, but I'm also going to mention that I'm going to link to a bunch of videos that I've done on the other channel in the description box. So you can go check any of those out if you think they relate to anything that you might want to learn. But the last video I did here, I talked about going in to see the caregiver and I never mentioned diabetes in the title, which might explain how come not a lot of people went, to, you know, to see it. And I had another appointment about three weeks ago. And it's turned out to be more interesting than I thought it was going to be. So I had the appointment. They actually canceled uh, the first one because the caregiver, which was the nurse practitioner, was sick. And then they just made a time saying, okay, this is when we want you to be here. And I said, no, 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 it doesn't work that way. <laughs> we have to, we have to agree on a time. You can't just like tell me you need me at this time. So anyhow, I did that and it was set up for the next week. So I go in there and they always have someone who comes in first to take vitals. So this guy is in there and he puts me on the scale. I'm fine there does my height, I'm fine there. He's getting ready to check my glucose. And I said, you know, the reason I've always fasted when I've come here is because I always wanted my glucose level to be at a nice level to show this is what I wake up doing. And I've always had morning appointments. It's the first one I've had in the afternoon, so it's not going to look like it does in the morning. He says, well, that's not why we check it. I said, it's not. He says, no, as a matter of fact, the higher it is, as long as it's not overly high, is what we want to see. I said, why would you want to see that? He says, because if it's lower than 100, we're not allowed to let you leave until we get it back over 100. I'm like, wait, what? He says, yeah. He says, in New York State. Now, he doesn't know if this is all states, but this is in New York State. If you're driving on the road and you get into any kind of accident, or maybe you just pull over onto the side of the road or you do something really weird and the police, you know, pull up behind you or pull you over and they check you and your glucose isn't high enough, you get a ticket for that. I never knew. I never knew that at all. If there's any kind of accident and you're diabetic and your glucose is low, then you're the one who's going to get all the charges, not the person who either you hit or hit you because it's going to be assumed that you were impaired mentally because your glucose level was low. So all these years I have fasted going in. I should just be eating my thing, you know, stop over real quick, get myself a McDonald's hash fry or some French fries. <laughs> so that's a new one on me. Let me know if that's a new thing on you. So he does his thing. And then he leaves and then the nurse practitioner comes in and we do our maybe one or two minute banter. And then I said, okay, I'm just going to lay this on the line with you. I've been having a lot of lows lately. That seems to be my biggest problem and I don't like it. I can get up though. I go into the kitchen. I get myself the apple juice because you mentioned apple juice the last time. I've got my Ritz crackers and my peanut butter. And so I drink the apple juice while I eat my crackers and peanut butter. And then I wait until I feel a little bit better. And when I feel a little bit better, then I go back to sleep. And she says, well, you've been doing that wrong. I said, okay, but you told me to drink the apple juice. He says, yes, but you drink the apple juice or something sweet. 
and then you wait 15 minutes and you see if your glucose has gone higher. And if it hasn't, then you have to drink more apple juice or whatever and you wait another 15 minutes. He said, and then she said, when you get to a level where now you're not low anymore, that's when you can eat the protein. I said, you mean the peanut butter and the Ritz crackers? He says, yes. She said, if you eat it at the same time that you're drinking the apple juice or something sweet, they kind of cancel each other out. I've been diabetic 25 years. I've been going to them for over 15 years. The first time anyone's ever mentioned this. And <laughs> I said, well, I, okay, there's something else I didn't know. So then we're getting ready to talk about the insulin. And then she says, well, I want to talk to you about your A1C. I said, yeah, last time you seemed a little put out because it was 5.7, which is supposedly a good number to be at. She says, well, that's where we'd like people to be within that range of, you know, 5, uh, 5.9 to 6.5. But we don't necessarily like it to be lower because that starts to show a trend. Your A1C this time is 5.3. Now, my mind still thinks, I went online, I did my research, 5.3 sounds like a good deal, but I guess not because it keeps going down. And she said, this seems to be a thing with your lows. We need to look at this. So <laughs> she says, how much insulin have you been taking lately? Have you stuck to the number? I said, well, I had a short period of time where I raised it to 20 milligrams twice a day. And she said, why did you do that? And I said, because I saw the ophthalmologist and he said, my eyes weren't getting better as quick as they should. That's one of those other videos that I did where I was talking about going to see him for after the cataract surgery again. And so I looked at the numbers. I told him, well, they'd been a little high. They'd been in the 140s and 150s. She says, that's not high. I said, but it's not within range. He says, no. She said, if something is just out of range, that's not a bad thing. She said, a high is if you're over 250 or anything higher than that. She said, anything that's a little higher, that shouldn't be affecting your eyes at all. So that was illuminating. So then we talked about the insulin. And she knows that I take the 70-30 because, you know, that's the thing they've been having me take for over 10 years. And she said that I need to probably think about bringing it even lower. She says, don't be so set on trying to keep it in a low area or trying to keep it right in that, you know, specific area. Yes, that is what we look at and we say that looks really good. But if it's a little low, just a little low or a little high, or even if it's going up to 170, 180, unless it's always there, then that's not a big deal. I said, well, that's interesting. And I told her, you know, it's, it's also weird in the fact that in the last week and a half, I've lost two and a half pounds because I've been walking a lot. But it turns out I'm not eating as much as I was. I'm eating between 1,200 and 1,300 calories. She says, no, you need to eat more. I, I, she said, you just need to eat more calories. You need to have that balance between carbs and protein. I can never remember the other one, what the other one is, but still, uh, you know, she says, you need to have that kind of balance in there, but you definitely need to eat more food and you probably need to space it out more. So I said, okay, well, learning more stuff. So then she goes, goes through the rest of the, you know, how she's checking me out. And then she says, so have you thought any more about getting that monitor? I said, no, because I really have never wanted the monitor, which is true. The first time it was ever mentioned, I said, I don't want a monitor because I don't want to be tracked. I'm in my 60s. I just have this weird thing about not wanting to be tracked. I know that it can be helpful, but until someone says you are really in a critical, delicate stage, you need to let someone else track. You need to have an app on your phone or whatever. I'm not doing that. But then, you know, we're talking about this thing and she says, you know, one of the things that you have a problem with, of course, is that you're running through strips fast. They cost you a lot of money. 
because if you're looking to, you know, if you're having to check later in the day or, you know, whenever, you've got to be going through those a lot sooner. I said, well, truthfully, most of the time I only check in the morning. I never check any other time unless I wake up and I know I'm crashing because I'm really hungry. She says, look, you can try the monitor and you don't have to put an app on it. It's a different thing than it was, you know, four or five years ago. You don't have to send anything to us if you don't want to, but it will help you because you'll have something that you can check all the time to see where you stand at that time. I said, okay, let's give it a shot. So she leaves, this other person comes in and she's telling me about these two types of monitors that they recommend and she's, you know, whatever. I picked the one and I figure, okay, there we are. She says, you will get called by your pharmacy when it's ready. It took a week before I got that call from the pharmacy. So I guess this is a different kind of deal. This isn't anything that they just keep on hand. So I go, I get it, I come home, and I have what's called the Libra 3. This is it. This is the Libra 3. And it's a freestyle, which is interesting because that's what one of my early glucose monitors used to be, you know, where you stuck yourself and used the strips. But I have a Libra 3. Libra 3. And you see this white thing here? on my shoulder or wherever that is on the arm that wasn't as easy to put on as I thought it was going to be I just thought I was gonna put on a sticker and I was wondering how is that gonna stay on my arm it ain't just a sticker <laughs> I don't want to open this you know open up the box but in essence it's got this thing that almost looks like an old I think it was how people used to make orange juice and I've never I don't like orange juice but I think I remember seeing that way back in the day where you would have this thing and you would squeeze the orange in it, push down, and the orange juice would come out of it. That's what it reminded me of. But I had to work hard to get that unscrewed. I actually had to go and get my special gloves that I have that have the grips on them just to get a grip on it to open it up. And I did it. And it's got this, well, it's got this thing in it. And you see this metal thing sticking out. I'm like, okay, I don't think I like that. And it gave you an idea of where you're supposed to put it on your arm. So I reached back and I'm still not necessarily sure it's in the right place because it turns out I never thought about doing it that way. Eh. And then you push this button, you feel something, but it didn't really hurt, but it was shocking. It's just like, pow. It's like, okay, well, there we are. And then they're synced. You might have to charge it first before it works just to make sure that you have some kind of charge in it but initially mine was charged so i went with that now here's the thing about the monitor first you always have to stay within 20 feet of it so if you put it in a pocket you're going to be good all the time if you're sitting at the desk like i am right now well you know i'm obviously closer than 20 feet but i now keep it in the bathroom at night why? Because the first night I had the monitor, it went off saying I was crashing. Truth of the matter is, I knew already I was crashing because I woke up and I felt really hungry and I was really hot and I said, okay, I'm crashing. But let me see what this thing is. And this thing said I was at 67. So I was like, okay, well, there we are, 67. We're in line. So I go in and I get my get my apple juice and I put a little extra sugar in it and I come back and now I'm gonna see what happens if I follow what the nurse practitioner said to do. So I drink this apple juice and I wait 15 minutes. And now I look at the monitor again and it's down to 53. And I said, what, what, what? No, it's supposed to be going the other way I drank this apple juice. That can't be right. So I go and just get a little bit more apple juice and I drink that and wait another 15 minutes. Now it's just at 50, still going in the wrong direction. It's like, oh God, I'm tired. I want to get back to sleep, whatever. So I go back into the kitchen and I decide to make a quick cup of hot tea and I get the regular sugar because when I have my tea every morning, 
I put just a dash of sugar in it and I use equal. Well, now I feel like I need to put a lot more sugar in it. And then I get my bottle of honey. I put a lot of honey in it and I stir this thing up and I drink that. And after 10 minutes, I do a check and I'm up to 70. I said, okay, now it's moving in the right direction. In another five minutes, it's at 85. Now, I've said in my other videos that for me, over 100 is good, but it's going up. So now I can have my crackers and my peanut butter and I don't eat a, a bunch of them. I just ate enough so that I could go back to sleep. And I finally went back to sleep. The next morning I woke up and it's saying that the glucose is around 179. I'm like, fine. You know what? At least I was able to get back to sleep. During the day, I noticed that it would jump really high. If it goes over 250, then I get that same alarm that I got the night before or that night when it dropped under. But I wasn't mad about going high because it was already higher than I normally would have had it. I decided I needed to eat something a bit more substantial than I usually do in the morning because I didn't want to deal with that. But I also checked my standard monitor and the standard monitor said I was around 210. So that's a 40 range different, 40 milligram difference. And I said, okay, I'm not sure which one of these is more correct, but I've been using the other one for a good long time. So I'm not thinking about it. I didn't eat lunch when I was supposed to eat lunch. Around 3.30, the alarm on this thing goes off. I was like, what is that? And the alarm said that I was at 69. I said, wait, come on. Could I really be at 69? I'm not hungry. I know it's during the day, but I don't usually have crashes during the day. Sometimes I do if I've gone six to eight hours without eating, but I didn't feel like it. So I checked my glucose and it said it was at 80. Well, for me, 80 is still low. I said, okay, I'll give it that shot. So then I had something. And then that night I had another thing with the alarm went off saying I was at 67. I got out of bed. I checked the manual and it said I was at 109. I said, no, uh-uh, I can't have this anymore. And so that's when I started leaving it in the bathroom, which is still closer than 20 feet away so that I wouldn't hear it. And I went right back to bed. 109, I can live with that. I also knew that if it dropped, my body would wake me up. And by the way, just to throw this in there because I hadn't, I didn't mention it earlier, when I was talking with the nurse practitioner about the lows, she said, well, you know, having a lot of lows is not a good thing. I said, well, you know, at least I can take care of it. She says, yeah, but there are some people who never wake up from a low. And I looked at her and then I remembered back in 2013, when I was working out of town, I was working in Memphis and I decided to go to a barbecue restaurant that was right down the street from the hotel I was at. And they cook their uh, barbecue a lot different than we get it up here. It's always cooking. So it had a whole bunch of fat in it. Uh, it was wonderful. And then I had banana pudding. And then I got back to the hotel and within an hour, I had to get in bed because I was exhausted. And I was in bed for about six and a half hours. And when I woke up, I felt horrible. And I was dizzy. I couldn't figure out what to do. And I finally figured out I need to check my glucose to find out where, where I'm at. And it was at 31. And that was scary. That's the lowest it's ever been. 31. And it didn't wake me up like it does at home because I don't eat that kind of food most of the time at home. As a matter of fact, it's rare that I eat that kind of thing. And it took me about 30 minutes to be able to crawl out of bed. This is really, this is the truth. I had to crawl out of bed to crawl into the kitchen uh, because I was staying in a Homewood Suites. So I had a kitchen and I was lucky that I had bought some popsicles, which is very rare but I had bought some popsicles at one of the grocery stores there. 
and I pulled out a popsicle and I put it in my mouth and that felt good. So I had two popsicles to try to raise stuff up a little bit. And that was probably the closest I ever came to having a low that might have put me out of my misery, put me out of everyone's misery. You know, however you want to look at that. Um, so I thought about that when she said that, say, okay, I never want that to happen. So here's the thing. The monitor, it does give you some kind of idea. Sometimes it's too high. Sometimes it's too low once it gets moving. But at least it's something that I can check all the time. Like right now I'm checking. It's saying I'm at 171 and it's going down. That's because I took my insulin about an hour ago and I lowered the amount because last night I had this little bit of a crash and it's like, no, I've got to stop that. I've got to figure out how to do that. And so I made sure that I'm going to eat more, try to get those calories up. I'm going to see if I can get between 1800 and 1900 a day even though I was trying not to because when I don't eat a lot of calories and I walk as much as I do, I lose weight and I had another weight goal. Weight goal's out the window for now. This is just one of those kind of things where I need to stop having lows. And now that I know that I've actually been talking about lows for almost 10 years, and I remembered that I had lows before when I would be out walking and it was hot and that's when I first learned that too much sunlight can actually lower your glucose level, especially if you're doing anything strenuous. Well, I was walking at the lake. I wasn't just walking slowly. I was walking. I was trying to get my five miles in at the lake. So I need to remember all those lessons. Everyone needs to remember these lessons that come up so that you take care of yourself. As for the monitor, you charge it all the time and you're going to be good. But the thing on my arm, that only lasts for two weeks. And then an alarm will go off and say, hey, it's time to change the monitor thing or the sticky thing. And there you go. So in essence, it's not perfect, but at least it's going to give me some kind of idea of which direction it thinks my glucose is going. And if I need to, I can at least do something so that it either stops going super high or stops going super low. Hey, I don't know if this has been perfect all those years I've had it, but you know, this is what you have to do. Anyway, this has turned out a lot longer than I thought it was going to be, but I had to tell the story. I hope you made it this far. I hope you jumped around to pick up certain things here and there. And Let's see how this goes. My name is Mitch Mitchell. I hope y'all take care. And I hope I didn't make you fall asleep too easily. Y'all take care.